So the thing about extinction is that we're not just losing large grey animals around the world. Our media is dominated by the loss of elephants, by tigers, of lions. The, these things, for good reason, capture the people's imaginations. They make us think about loss and how magnificent these creatures are disappearing in the landscape and seascapes that we live in is actually incredibly sad. But extinction is dominated by the silent majority. Species of plants, fungi, insects, birds, and frogs have been obliterated over the last hundred years or so. And I think we need to also explore why that has occurred and identify some of those species and actually mourn them and think about why, why they went extinct and what we could have done better. Behind me is the Brisbane River. It flows through one of the biggest cities in Australia, the city of Brisbane. But yet 50 kilometres from the centre of the city, a remarkable frog was discovered in 1984 called the gastric brooding frog. Now this frog was remarkable. It was, a, it was able to take tadpoles back into its stomach and actually allowed a tadpole to survive and grow within the, the confines of the body of the frog until they were big enough and safe enough to, to exist in, its wild, in the wild places that surrounded its mother. What's profound about this is that it was able to digest food and actually distinguish between the tadpole that was in the stomach and food products that was coming through and being digested by the mother frog. Can you imagine what that could have informed uh, medicine? Can you imagine that you could have a, a, an animal living inside your stomach happily, one of your own offspring, and still be able to function normally with food, and then release the offspring in a way that actually allows it to survive and thrive in the environment around it? This would have been incredible for things how we understood the stomach and how we could actually fight things like cancer of the stomach. Unfortunately, within a year of its discovery, it went extinct. Now, why it went extinct, people are trying to find out still. But people believe it was an interaction between deforestation that was, a, was making the streams that where the frog lived more muddy and more polluted, and disease, where a new type of fungus that humans brought in made the species very vulnerable and, and decrease in populations. So the interaction between pollution of creeks because of deforestation and disease probably led to the extinction of the frog. But the other thing is, it's a remarkable species that was lost unnecessarily. It was found and it was a cause of great celebration. But before anyone could actually understand what was threatening the species, it disappeared. Unfortunately for frogs, the gastric brooding frog is not just the only species that is declining and gone extinct in the last few years. Hundreds of species of frog have disappeared around the world. Frogs including the golden toad from Costa Rica and Colombia, an incredible animal beautiful, has disappeared quickly and lost, the, lost in those rainforests. People think because of climate change, and some, some people think it's actually the first casualty of climate change. But there are many other species around the world that actually gone extinct. We need to actually understand why frogs are disappearing and document and let the world know and document why, what we can do about it. So there are a number of things we can do to save frogs from around the world. The first is invest in science. Many scientists are actually trying to understand what is causing this dramatic decline. We know it's an interaction and a complex interaction between climate change, deforestation and disease. But we really need to understand what the smoking gun is to really save them individually and as a group of species. What threatens frogs in southeast Queensland will be very different from what threatens frogs in Colombia or in Madagascar. The second thing is actually Force your governments and your local councils to protect habitats. We know that if a frog loses its habitat, we know that if their habitat is degraded or polluted, that frog will decrease in population and become more and more vulnerable to extinction. So simple measures of actually fighting for habitat protection and restoration is a very good way to actually ensure that frogs at least have a chance. And the third thing you can do is go out to your local patch and listen for frogs. There is a, there's a group called Frog Watch, which actually is now picking up around the world, where you actually can actually go and listen to different calls and actually talk to others to see what frogs are in your environment and which species are disappearing from that environment. 